Nearly 10 past three now in the afternoon, RT coming to you live from the Russian capital. It's the kind of information that fuels conspiracy theorists everywhere. Danish journalists claim that several World Health Organization advisors are on the payroll of leading pharmaceutical companies that make swine flu vaccines. We're now joined by Louise Voller from Copenhagen. She's a journalist at the Danish Daily Information newspaper and co-author of the report. Hello to you, Mrs. Voller. Thank you very much in advance for joining us today. I'll get straight to the point. So what is the connection between the WHO and big pharmaceutical companies? Well, um, the biggest problem seems to be that we don't know enough there is not enough transparency on financial disclosure on the expert groups used by WHO. So, when in, in time of crisis such as swine flu, pandemic, WHO gather an expert group to find out what are the recommendations. What are the recommendations of the vaccine, of the disease and so on. What we do know is that the pharmaceutical industry is present at the meetings of WHO expert groups, but what we don't know is what they talk about. And another thing is that scientists who appear to be independent are also hired consultants working for the same pharmaceutical companies who produce the vaccines. This is, this is clearly an issue that needs to be taken care of. Right, right. Well, certainly this is a bit of a, a potentially touchy subject uh, for not just the pharmaceutical mm. companies, but for the WHO as well. I mean, how do you think the WHO will react to your report? Uh, I think you should ask WHO uh, on how they will react. But when uh, we asked them, my colleague and I at the, at the newspaper, um, they declared that there are no financial uh, uh, conf conflict of interest. Um, they will not, probably not publish the, ex the uh, financial disclosures of the expert that, that they use um, unless there's some kind of pressure put on these expert groups. Are you suspicious of the fact that so much fear has been spread about this when many experts say this virus isn't necessarily any more dangerous than conventional flu? Well, um, I'm not really a scientist and I don't know, I, I'm not know, know enough about swine flu to talk about swine flu, but um, what I think the, the original fear was that this virus would mutate in some way, which is you know, reasonable doubts that they, it could. But um, if, we, if we look at the facts, the pandemic broke out 11th of June this year. 6,000 people, around 6,000 people worldwide has died from it by now. And, you know, 500,000 people die every year from conventional flu. So I'm thinking there's a bit of, you know, mass hysteria about this. So which is, yes, a bit suspicious. Mm, indeed. And, and Mrs. Voller, it, my... It, 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 yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. I was just going to say, my final question for you. I know, you, I know you're busy. Um, is anything concrete being done to investigate these allegations? No, not currently, not at the moment. I don't think so. Um, I think what needs to be, that it, be done is that it has to be public. What is going on in these meetings? What is going on in these expert groups? Who are the people working for WHO and who else are they working for? Mm. Indeed, indeed. And that was Louise Voller from the Danish Daily Information. Thank you very, very much for your time. That certainly is fascinating Thank stuff. You.